dun 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 Okay, so I put my Glock 43 in the wash as well. You put your Glock G43 in the washer? Why would you do that? Well, uh, I need to wash it before I dry it. You need to wash your G43 before you dry it? What are you thinking? Because, uh, well, that's when the magic happens. Magic? What's flipping magic? What are you talking about? What are you thinking? Are you out of your flipping brain? You'll see. You'll see. Be patient. You'll see. Everything's going to work out. Just fine. I hope keep my fingers crossed that this works, I guess. Honey, I shrunk the gun. Now it's ready for a review. Hello everyone. Don't mind the wife. She doesn't believe in magic. It's the Range Ronin again and today I'm going to review the shrunken G43, the Glock G42, and my impression of it. It took a while in the dryer to get that G43 down to G42 size. Unfortunately, I forgot to unload the magazine of the G43. It and its contents shrunk as well. You believe that, right? We all know that in 2013, a new long slide 45 ACP was developed and released as the model 41 Gen 4 and the slimline model 42 and 380 caliber was also released. The 42 is still the only model available in 380 to the U.S. market. Models 25 and 28 are sold internationally, but require special permits for importation to the U.S. Then, in 2015, a new 10 millimeter long slide model was developed and released as the Model 40 MOS. Model 43 was also released in the summer and was the first slimline 9mm that was similar but slightly larger than the Model 42. The G43X, another subcompact pistol with a larger capacity than the G43, followed, which was soon followed by the G48, a 10 round compact model. Somewhere in that mix came the G19X crossover and G45 compact pistols that, while the slides were of the G19 family, shared frames from the G17 family. The G42 was met with disappointment as Glock followers were seeking a single stack 9mm and the G42 was chambered in the 380 caliber. The G42, G43, G43X, and G48 share one commonality. They are all single stack pistols. The G42 can be compared to the rest of the subcompact 380 caliber pistols on the market, but I would rather not do that. I would rather look at the G42 the way it needs to be looked at, a stand apart from the rest of the Glock pack. Let's talk about the 380 cartridge first. The 380 caliber cartridge is not new. The 380 ACP 9x17mm automatic Colt pistol is a rimless, straight-walled pistol cartridge developed by firearms designer John Moses Browning in 1908 and was introduced in 1908 by Colt for use in its new Colt model 1908 pocket hammerless semi-automatic. Other names for the 380 ACP include 380 Auto, 9x17mm, 9mm Browning, 9mm Corto, 9mm Kurs, 9mm Short, and 9mm Browning Quart. Common bullet weights include 45 grain, 85 grain, 90 grain, 95 grain, 
100 grain, and 102 grain. The Glock G42 is only one of many small pistols, and some not so small, like the Beretta Cheetah family, to house the 380 cartridge. Bullet velocities can range from 950 feet per second to 1,835 feet per second. Many believe that the 380 caliber be in the minimum for self-defense, while mainly comparing it to the 32 ACP cartridge. I feel that belief is unwarranted. It is still a 9mm, 0.355 inch cartridge, and some, like the Underwood Ammo 380 ACP Penetrator 90 grain, meet the FBI standard of 18 inches of penetration. However, by most indications, 380 ACP rounds are less likely to stop an attacker, even with multiple hits, compared to common service calibers like the 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, or 45 ACP. If you are going to trust your life to something smaller, there has to be a pretty compelling reason for not choosing one of the real calibers. That in itself is reason enough for many folks to dismiss the Glock G42 as a serious self-defense tool. Moreover, any subcompact pistol, regardless of caliber, will not have enough barrel length to maximize the chosen cartridge. Two such examples are the Spear Gold Dot 380 ACP 90 grain out of a 3.66 inch barrel, which is rated at 1,008 feet per second, while the Spear Gold Dot 9mm short barrel ammunition is rated at 1,142 feet per second out of a 3 inch barrel. Up the barrel length and up the velocity. The same gold dot 90 grain 380 round out of a 5 inch barrel will garner 1,093 feet per second, while the same gold dot 9 millimeter short barrel 124 grain would yield 1,251 feet per second out of the 4.875 inch barrel of the Beretta 92FS. It's all simply a numbers game with no predictable outcome. So, with that said, let's talk about the G42 with this 3.25 inch barrel. The Glock G42 is a subcompact 380 caliber pistol that is bigger than some and smaller than others. It is heavier than some and it is lighter than others. It has a 3.25 inch barrel that is longer than some and shorter than others. It has advantages over some and disadvantages to some of the others. So, what is the appeal of the G42? I think that it has something to do with the fact that it is a Glock, a pistol by design that took and shook the handgun world. Five generations into a plethora of polymer pistols offered from 22 caliber to 10 millimeter, to include 357 SIG. Glock pistols have been tried and accepted by many as being reliable as they are accurate. Let's slide further into the G42. The slide is like any other Glock pistol that is scaled to the cartridge. Rear slide serrations, front and rear polymer sights, all mimic comparable size Glock pistols. The NDLC slide coating is the same found on all Gen 5 Glock pistols. The barrel, a tad shorter by 0.16 inch than the 3.41 inch barrel of the G43. The slide width at only 0.04 inches slimmer than the G43. The total height is only 0.12 inch shorter than that of the G43. The grip width is 0.08 inch thinner than a G43, yet capacity is the same. The texture of the grip is the same texture as that found on all Gen 5 Glock pistols. And like all Gen 5 Glock pistols, there are no finger grooves on the front strap of the grip, which some welcome and some do not. The takedown lever, slide lock lever, and magazine release are in their usual positions. The magazine release can be mounted for right side operation. The slide lock is left side only. The G42 contains the same type trigger as found on all Glock pistols, and the safe action is incorporated into the G42. 
Block's website claims the G42's trigger brake at 5.5 pounds, which is pretty close to what others have reported. On a trigger scale, the Glock G42 that I have averaged 6 pounds, 12.6 ounces, with a 5 pull average. That is a pretty hefty trigger pull, but it does not feel that heavy when pulled, and the trigger brakes clean, and the reset is quick. The heavy trigger is the most disappointing aspect of this gun for me, but a heavy Glock trigger is still a big improvement over the double action triggers often found on other carry pistols. I found the Glock G42 to have a really nice grip, especially for a pistol this small. It has a decent amount of texturing and a deep recess for the web of the shooting hand to get a high grip. Like most small guns, my pinky didn't have anything to hang on to, which for me makes the gun much harder to shoot well. A couple of Pierce grip extensions installed on the Glock factory magazines will fix the problem right away. Also, Glock OEM magazines with extensions are available. So, why should this pistol interest me, or anyone else for that matter? Aside that it is a Glock, I was looking for another 380 caliber pistol. I had a Sig Sauer P230 in the past, as well as a Colt Mustang. Both, however, had to be sold during hard times. I do miss them, as they were excellent pistols. Later, I eventually ended up with two Bursa Thunder 380 caliber pistols, one single stack and one double stack, and they are both reliable and dead-on accurate. So why the Glock G42? First of all, I have a healthy financial interest in Glock handguns and have come to realize the quality of their firearms. The G42 just fits in with the rest of the toolbox. A light and subcompact pistol like the G42 takes some range time to become proficient with it. Because of its size and trigger reach, I must concentrate on keeping those sights aligned while trying to keep a good grip on the pistol. With my finger length, trying to keep that pull straight back is the challenge. Normally, I find myself indexing the first joint of my trigger finger on the trigger and trying to pull straight back from there without flexing the rest of the hand. I definitely have to concentrate on the squeeze. The G42 is not a target pistol. It is made for up close and personal shooting, and just pointing the muzzle at the target may be sufficient at very close range. 
At seven yards, I was fighting for control of the G42 to hit what I wanted. I needed my usual Hogue finger groove slip-on grips for this little beast for help holding on to the diminutive grip surface available to me. Not a lot of 380 calibers at my disposal. I had enough Remington FNJ and 95 grain JHP ammunition from Georgia Arms at 925 feet per second to get an idea of what the G42 is capable of. Using only the six rounds per magazine for this excursion, I wanted to limit my shooting to Mozambique drills once I got the hang of things G42. Concealing the G42 is as simple as stowing it in a pants pocket. While I may stir up some controversy here, I carry the G42 in my pants pocket. However, I do carry a cross trawl, fully chambered at times, in a good IWB holster, and that is really my preferred carry for this pistol. Not surprisingly, the G42 carries well in my Alien Gear Cloak Tuck 3.5 IWB holster, for the Glock 43, and the Gelco Classic Light 2 shoulder holster for the Glock G43. These are my favorite holsters for both single stack and double stack Glocks. Many will want to carry the G42 appendix, and that's fine if that is your thing. I invite you to shop for the best holster, regardless of carry method, that will keep your person safe. With the G42 primarily intended for up-close and personal shooting, the standard sights are good enough. Upgrades primarily consist of adding the Hogue wraparound grip to give me a better purchase on the grip, adding magazine extensions to the provided grips, and or purchasing spare mags with extensions installed. The G42 is an interesting little thing, svelte in my hand, but capable of launching a projectile capable of stopping a threat with careful handling on my part. How many rounds stopping the threat might take, I can't answer. But then, I could not provide an answer for many defensive cartridges. Stopping a threat just has too many variables to sum up in one sentence. 
stopping a threat may just take brandishing the pistol, and that is ideal. However, should things turn nasty, it is up to your capabilities with your natural tools, tools that you have in your hand, physics, and the physical and mental condition of the assailant that determines the outcome. I don't discount the 380 caliber for defensive use, and I do believe that the G42 is an excellent tool to put it through. Refuse the old adage that a 380 is better than nothing. Once again, thank you for taking part in my story. I hope that you will return for future gun and gear reviews. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Ronan? Now that you are through doing whatever manly thing you are doing, would you please fold the clothes that you washed with your pistol? Of course I will, sweetness. Man has got to do what a man has got to do. Nag, nag, nag. Somebody help me understand. Honey, do this. Honey, do that. Jeez, Louise. <laughs>